God is good. Let's do worship God once again. In our hearts, Jesus, I love you. We're incredible. We're tremendous. Hallelujah. You are awesome. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We need to remember uh, is it Caden looking for sis Sister Bowers. All right, let's remember Kate. This is her grandson needs prayer, and uh, let's go before the Lord. I did want to mention before we pray that uh, two things to remember. It's two or three are gathered together in Jesus' name. So Jesus, Jesus is here in our midst. He's here right in the middle of us. So that is amazing. And he's not only in our hearts, but he is here in the middle of us. And secondly, today is the beginning of the rest of your life. All your past failures, all your past shortcomings, you can radically change them today through the power of the Holy Ghost. You can get your mind stayed on Jesus, and uh, you can be that apostolic prayer warrior and saint that uh, you've always wanted to be, and that kind of let circumstances hold you down. So I did want to remind us about that. Let's go before the Lord for Caden. God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I love you, Father. You're so incredible. You said the fervent, effectual prayers of righteous people would avail much. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I ask you to lose healing on this little baby. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, whatever it is that's wrong, by your stripes we were healed. I love you, King Jesus. I pray. Hallelujah. I glorify you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God, hallelujah. Just give us your mind and your heart today as the word goes forth. Let's have open hearts and minds in Jesus' mighty name. Why don't we just magnify Jesus once again? He's incredible. Hallelujah. Put God in the proper perspective. He is master. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, you can be seated in the name of the Lord. It is so good to see everybody here in the house of God. Now, last week we started on looking at the name of Jesus, and we were in the book of John. And showing that from the book of John, so often it said to receive eternal life, you had to believe on the name of Jesus. And the name of Jesus was Jehovah's salvation. It was a sign that he was God and man. Now we're going to enter into the book of Acts. And as you might suspect, all throughout the book of Acts, the name of Jesus reigns supreme. And so Acts chapter 2, beginning at verse 21. Acts chapter 2, verse 21, as you're turning there. Remember in John 20, 31, it said that the whole reason for the book of John was written, that people would have life through the name of God. Now, Acts chapter 2, verse 21, life through the name of Jesus. And this is quoting uh, the book of Joel, and it says, And it shall come to pass that whosoever, Acts 2, 21, shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And so this is talking about calling on the name of Jesus. So we call on the name of Jesus. When do we call on Him? Call on Him in faith that repents. Jesus, forgive me. We have the name of Jesus called over us in water baptism. And then to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. We call on the name of Jesus. And if we being evil know how to give good gifts, how much more will our Heavenly Father give uh, good gifts to those, the Holy Spirit to those that ask Him? So with uh, joy, we draw waters out of the wells of salvation. We say the name of Jesus, and uh, Jesus fills us with his Holy Spirit. So we see the name of Jesus is intimately involved in every part of salvation. And uh, thank you, sir. In repentance, we call on the name of Jesus. If you don't call on the name of Jesus in repentance, who are you repenting to? You know, so repentance, it's about Jesus. Water, baptism, it's about Jesus. Reception of the Holy Ghost, reception of the Holy Ghost is not just about yielding, it's not just about letting go, but it's letting Jesus, it's letting the power of God fill us with his spirit we are filled with the spirit of jesus christ if it was all just about letting go many people let go on a dance floor on friday and saturday night 
You know, so it's not just about letting go. Of course, there is an element of surrender. That goes back to repentance. But it's when we call on the name of Jesus. Jesus fills us with the Holy Ghost. So many people mistakenly look at Acts 2.21 and say that is just the totality of the plan of salvation. And I find it fascinating how Satan has sown discord. He has sown those tares out there to where there's so much confusion on how people are saved. You can go to a church of a particular denomination and say, well, I want to be saved. They'll say, John 3.16. For God so loved the world that uh, He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Just mentally assent. Believe. You're saved. Then you can never be lost. You can go up the street to a church of the same organization and say, what must I do to be saved? John 5.24 says you have to believe on Him who sent me. Talking about the Father, the Spirit of God. Did you believe on the one who sent Jesus Christ? Yes, you're saved. Then you can go to the exact same denomination. Church up the street around the corner. What must I do to be saved? Well, if you believe in your heart the Lord Jesus and confess with your mouth, uh, you know, believe in your heart God raised him from dead, confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, thou shalt be saved. So now it's not just about believing in Jesus. It's not just about believing in the Father. You've got to believe something specific about Jesus, that he was raised from the dead, and you've got to confess with your mouth. And then other people, you go to the exact same denomination. Go to Acts 2.21. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Call on Jesus' name. You can't, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. You can't speak unless you believe. So call on the name of Jesus, and you'll be saved. So friend, I just want to tell you that Acts 2.38 encompasses every plan of salvation that's out there and uh, it is the gospel of jesus christ don't settle for anything less god has provided a way a plan don't let your family settle for anything less don't let your friends don't let your neighbors the worst thing you can do for somebody is to allow them to die lost in their sins people say well i just love them so much i hate to tell them well friend you know if, if this building was on fire I wouldn't say, boy, I just love Sister Cook so much, I'm going to let her stay in here and get burnt up in the fire. <laughs> I'd say, come on, let's get out of here. Hallelujah, I can show you a way out. So true love shows a way out. Sincerity is not the plan of salvation. Boy, up north right now, i got to go teach in Indianapolis this week, Monday and Tuesday. I'll be back Wednesday, Lord willing, for church. If the snow doesn't snow us out. Check the Weather Channel this morning online. There's a 90% chance of snow for all Benny Tuesday night. Hallelujah. 90% chance. I don't know if it'll happen. You know how that is. <laughs> Probably be 35 and rain a little bit. But anyhow, but there's a 90% chance of snow as of right now. And uh, it's supposed to be negative 17 up there while I'm there. And I'm like, oh, Lord. That's not wind chill. It's supposed to be below 40 below wind chill. But uh, 23 mile an hour winds. But... Uh, uh, that ice, man, it freezes up there. And those kids get out there and they play hockey on that ice and all this kind of stuff. But every year it seems that there's multiple people out there that were so sincere. They knew that ice would hold them. Guess what? The ice didn't hold them. And they fall through and most of them die. Hypothermia happens. They get swept under the ice. They can't fight their way out of the ice. And uh, they went in a hole and then they got moved away. And they can't make it back to the ice, and they end up dying. They're usually in huge amounts of clothes, and that hinders them, you know, all the heavy jackets and all that kind of stuff. So sincerity is not the plan of salvation. Ignorance is not the plan of salvation. If ignorance was the plan of salvation, the very worst thing you and I could ever do is tell somebody about Jesus. Jesus just had it all mixed up when he said, go into all the world and tell all nations, teach all nations. You know, if ignorance was the plan of salvation, he'd have said, just shh, keep quiet, they're saved until you tell them. Because it's not his will that any should perish, but all should come to repentance and everlasting life. So if, uh, if you're saved by ignorance, well then, shh, no, Satan, he's the one that darkens people's minds. We have to tell people the plan of salvation. So the plan of salvation is the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, 
which is applied to our life through repentance, Lord, baptism in Jesus' name, the reception of the Holy Ghost, with the sign or the evidence of speaking in other tongues. And I want to encourage you, if you have not experienced that today, you need to experience that. It is the most awesome thing in all the world. It is the treasure. I mean, I get these little emails from Publishers Clearinghouse telling me, and, and you know, I'm not against this because you don't have to gamble. You don't have to buy anything. And it says, you are on some short list of 397 other million other people to win a million dollars for life. <coughs> and you read down bottom, it says the odds of you winning this million dollars a year for life are something like four quintillion or something. It's like, oh, okay, I, I see this. It's so amazing. And I don't even know how they do it because, you know, there's only 7.2 billion people on earth. But anyhow, it's some amazing odds and all stuff like that. But if you won that, man, that'd be good. You can help the kingdom of God and all that kind of stuff. But you, if you were born again of water and spirit, that's not even on the radar screen. You got the greatest thing in all the world. You got the most incredible thing in all the world. And so we need to walk in this awesomeness of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so, whosoever shall call upon the name of Jesus, the name of the Lord, shall be saved. Now we see this manifested in Acts 2.38. It says, now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. Peter just preached a message and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, including Matthew, men and brethren, what shall we do? And then Peter said unto them, repent, call on the name of the Lord, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin. The name of Jesus involved. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Because you call on the name of Jesus, he fills you with his spirit. And this for the promise is unto you and to your children. To all that are far off here in Albany, Georgia, January 26, 2014, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. So the name of Jesus, church, without the name of Jesus, we cannot be saved. You cannot be saved. It's not he that runneth, he that willeth, but it is God who gives the increase. It is the name of Jesus that provides the door and the plan of salvation. Now, the name of Jesus does so many other things. You cast out devils. In the name of Jesus. You pray for healing. In the name of Jesus. You pray for protection. In the name of Jesus. Friend, I'm glad to be a person of the name of Jesus. I'm glad that I have got now the name of Jesus applied to my, my life. My last name is Waldron. But when Jesus looks at each and every one of us that have been baptized in the name of Jesus, it is Jesus. He is looking at the body of Christ and we have the name of Jesus applied to us. So we never need to forget that. We are in an unusual circumstance down here in southwest Georgia where there is much pressure to conform to denominationalism. But church, if we love people and we love God, our goal will be not to conform to denominationalism, but to conform to the Word of God. And just as it was, I, I was so struck recently, I was doing some study and from history. And, uh, you know, in the 1830s, it looked like slavery would never be eliminated in the United States of America. I mean, the prospects for slavery being eliminated were very bleak indeed. But some people pushed, and some people prodded, and some people prayed, many people prayed, and many people worked. And to the 1860s, slavery was eradicated. And that's the way it has been throughout history. Martin Luther started out as one man. And he ended up converting almost half the known world. Started out with one man converting it to uh, something better than Catholicism, not quite apostolic, but something still a step on the road to being apostolic in that type thing. So we have to just stand our ground, preach, pray, love, believe God, because if God be for us, who can be against us? We can't allow our emotions to get involved in all of this, because there is great uh, forces at work. There was a uh, former prime minister of the United Kingdom. He said this. He said, religious extremism is the greatest threat in the 21st century. Religious extremism. Well, that's funny. Religious extremism, people who really love God, have given us every blessing of modern society. Isaac Newton, all the great scientists of, of antiquity, 
were believers in Jesus Christ and avid believers in Jesus Christ. Isaac Newton, who co-founded calculus, who gave us optics, who gave us the laws of physics, of gravity, of uh, motion, and still in England, the highest chairs of science are named after Newton. It's called Newtonian physics and this type of thing. Uh, wrote more about the Bible than he ever wrote about science. They were men of science and men of God. And so uh, how doctors and nurses started. Florence Nightingale was a passionate Christian. And she started the entire profession of nursing. And uh, so things that benefit people. Um, uh, William Booth, who started the Salvation Army, had a passion to feed and clothe the hungry. And brought that into the consciousness of uh, people everywhere to now we desire to do that in a very biblical way. So religious extremism uh, is not the greatest thing, the worst thing in uh, the 21st century. Friend, I would say atheism is. Yeah. Because atheism, what ha atheism has no morals because they have no God to answer to. So then it, what happened in the 20th century? Lenin was an atheist, killed 60 million of his own people. Mao was an atheist, killed 120 million of his own people. Ho Chi Minh was an atheist, killed millions of his own people. Fidel Castro was an atheist, killed many of his own people. Uh, so everywhere atheism was, there was death and destruction because they did not want your best. They had no morals. A Christian has to love his neighbor as he loved himself. A Christian has to follow the golden rule, Matthew 7, 12. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Uh, Christians, they give their life to save babies in the womb of the unborn all around this country. Christians will rather go to jail than say homosexual marriage is okay. So Christians give blessings. Christians give life. Uh, people that are zealous for God are a blessing to the things of God and to the people of God and to other people everywhere. Hallelujah. It's people that do not follow Christianity that are terrible, terrible, uh, you know, people against mankind. Hitler. Hitler was an atheist and he killed so many people in Germany and around. Started a world war. Um, Hirohito, he believed himself to be a god. So it was functional atheism. And again, many millions of people died because of that. But you don't find people who correctly follow the word of God, they're not killing anybody. They're loving people and they're giving people life. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. So if you don't know any other scripture, I encourage you to learn a bunch of scriptures. But if you don't know any other one, memorize Acts 2.38. And uh, then go to Acts 2.39, because it's promises to us here in Albany and to many as far off, as many as the Lord our God shall call. And if he be lifted up from the earth, which he was, he will draw all men unto him. He's calling everybody. So, the name of Jesus is powerful. Can you say amen? amen? The name of Jesus, as we saw last week, if you were here last week, means Jehovah's salvation. Now we come to the very next chapter in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 3, verse 6. It says, then Peter said, silver and gold have I none. It's good to feed the hungry. It's good to, to clothe the poor. But look at this. Silver and gold have I none. If you don't have anything material to give anybody else, but such as I have, you've always got this, if you're born again of water and spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. You can always pray for somebody in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And God will do incredible things. I, God is not dead. He's still alive. God is still in the miracle working business today. If you'll say in the name of Jesus, awesome things happen. Cancer shrivel up. All kinds of depression flees away. Friend, we've got the greatest thing in all of the universe in the name of Jesus Christ. When you say the name of Jesus, demons tremble. So the name of Jesus is just this awesome thing. And uh, I remember this uh, lady who was a witch. She was very high up in witchcraft. I've told this story before up in the state of Tennessee. And uh, she did not even know another scripture except one. She said, the scripture she knew was greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. 
and that Jesus is the Word made flesh. So the devils, they came when she went down to the Apostolic Pentecostal Church, down to the altar, and prayed. Man, the demons didn't like that. So she told the, the pastor, she said, the demons are going to come for me tonight. And he said, just say the name of Jesus and quote scripture. And so she says, and I tend to believe this, having had a little experience in the realms of the supernatural and that type of thing. I know these things happen. If you don't believe it, then just check out right now and check back in in about two minutes. Hallelujah. But it does have, don't ever doubt that Satan has power and that Satan does things. And so she said those demons came and actually began to spin her bed around. They levitated the bed and began to spin her bed around the room. And all she had say, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Hallelujah. Because quoting the word of God and saying the name of Jesus, and those demons could not touch her. Friend, you've got great power when you say the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We quote the word of God. Jesus is the word incarnate. He's the author of the word of God. So just say that wonderful name. When you and I say the name of Jesus, we've said it all. Hallelujah. And so we need to be people of the name unashamedly and unabashedly. Matthew 24, 9 and Matthew 10, 22 says that you will be hated of all men, all nations, for the name of Jesus Christ. Now, Andrew Urshan, he said, now speaking in tongues can be imitated. And uh, Andrew Urshan was a great pioneer of the apostolic faith. He actually wrote a great book called The Great Danger of the Pentecostal Movement. And in that book, he said, I have no doubt that one day the Pope of Rome may speak in tongues. And that does not mean he is right. There are many types of people who speak in tongues. And I believe in speaking in tongues. I think you should pray in the Spirit daily. I think it would build you up. But, same time, it doesn't say you'll be hated of all men because you speak in tongues. It says you'll be hated of all men for the name of Jesus Christ. Why? Because the name of Jesus Christ is exclusive. It promotes exclusivity. It means that everyone who has not been baptized with the name of Jesus Christ pronounced over them has not been baptized correctly and needs to get rebaptized. We in love say that they need to be rebaptized. Everybody does not have the name of Jesus, does not call the name of Jesus. When we pray over people, we don't say uh, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. We don't do this. We say in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. We anoint with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. The Lord shall raise him up. So when you say the name of Jesus, you're automatically saying Sikhs, Hindus, Buddhists, Muslims, others. You are not where you need to be. Hallelujah. That's the reason they try to get the name of Jesus out of school. Man, you can walk into a, many public high schools across America and you can have something defaming the most vulgar garbage in the world on your t-shirt. I mean defaming Christianity, whatever you want to. But you walk into a school and say a shirt that says Jesus is God or Jesus is the way. I'm going to tell you, most public high schools in America tell you, go take that, take that shirt off. You know, get rid of that shirt. You can go to most public high schools in America. And if you haven't been to one recently, you really need to go. You know, get per principal's permission and all of that kind of stuff. Don't do an Adam Lanza kind of thing. But, uh, you know, just go to observe and uh, look around. You will find men and men kissing in corners, ladies and ladies holding hands, kissing in corners, all kinds of disgusting, vile garbage, and uh, that's okay. You go to their classes, many times in the classes, they'll tell you uh, all kinds of garbage and health classes and stuff, all kinds of stuff that little kids and adults don't even need to know and all this kind of stuff. But you start saying the name of Jesus, bring your Bible out. They're like, oh no, what's going on here? So it's the name of Jesus is still powerful. Hallelujah. We've got to say the name of Jesus in our prayer. We've got to say the name of Jesus when we pray at congressional hearings, when we pray at city council meetings. Our chaplains have to say the name of Jesus. They continually say 
that our chaplains can't even pray in the name of Jesus in the U.S. military anymore. They keep sending out directives and then that's challenged in court and all that. And then they'll back off a little bit and then they'll try to make another pronouncement. Church, I'm going to tell you, the dividing line is on the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So you and I have got to stay strong in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. They don't even like Jesus uh, part of his last name, you know, Christ. They want to know, it's not Christmas, it's Happy Holidays. No, friend, we celebrate Jesus' birthday. We're not celebrating some pagan holiday. We're not celebrating some generic thing. This is all about Jesus. Hallelujah. Man, it just wants me to say the name of Jesus even more. The more they try to tell me not to say it, the more I want to say it. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. It's the sweetest name I know. Hallelujah. Friend, we've got to say the name of Jesus. Be sing about Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Two things about worship music in uh, this day and age. We've got to be very careful about our songs because some worship music, you and I know what we mean when we say to him and does all this and him, him, him and H-I-M and you, you're the one, on and on and so forth. But what we don't realize, and you can go on the internet and look this up, is Hindus come into a Christian worship service and they're like, well, we're singing to a generic hymn. They're singing to Jesus. We're singing to Buddha. We're singing to uh, Vishnu. Hallelujah. So, And we don't always need to sing about him. We need to sing to him. Hallelujah. And we also need to teach. This is where hymns come involved. I'm really begging. So some of our music people, our music people, uh, don't uh, they, they say it's been so long since they sang hymns they don't even know how to do hymns anymore and I understand that I'm no musician and all of this kind of stuff but hymns uh, taught the word of God music is an incredible teaching force you say well no it's not well first of all you'd be against all evidence empirically scientifically why do you think we sing songs in Sunday school to children so they'll learn and uh, Deuteronomy 32 33 God says, I want the nation of Israel to remember this. So Moses, write a song. The whole chapter is a song. And it says twice in the New Testament, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. And uh, sing grace in your hearts to the Lord. So we really don't need to throw the hymn books out of the church. Now, I'm not a hymn book only guy. I think we should still sing praise and worship songs and all that kind of stuff. And uh, but have a mixture because those hymns, man, I haven't heard many hymns in 10, 12 years, and they are still in my spirit. Hallelujah. Why? Because they taught something. It's all in Him. It's all in Him. The fullness of the Godhead. It's all in Him. It's all in Him. It's all in Him. The mighty God is Jesus, and it's all in Him. Uh, Emmanuel, God with us. Jehovah, Lord of hosts. The omnipresent present spirit that fills the universe. Uh, our advocate and high priest, a lamb for sinners slain, the author of redemption, Jesus is his name. It's all in him. It's all in him. The fullness of the Godhead, it's all in him. It's all in him. It's all in him. The mighty God is Jesus, and it's all in him. Hallelujah. That's talking about it. Don't just say it, him. It's he's Jesus is the him. Hallelujah. <laughs> So, in song after song, after amazing grace, how sweet the sound, that saved a wretch like me. See, I think if we sang that more often, we might get a little less puffed up and a little less prideful and realize what a dog we are. Hallelujah. Talking about in our flesh. Hallelujah. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I once was blind, but now I see. That's teaching something. John Newton was oneness, by the way, who wrote that song, Former Slave Trader who uh, got converted. So there's so many. Isaac Watts, one of the greatest hymn writers ever. When he died, they found out he was oneness. They read all his, his diaries and all of this kind of stuff. And uh, So many things. So uh, and we always just sing about the coming of the Lord and uh, that type thing. We even had, you remember when we used to have choruses about Jesus, 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 there's just something. About that name, Master, Savior, Jesus. Hey, it's just like the fragrance 
after the rain. Right. You know, Jesus, 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 let all heaven and earth proclaim. Kings and kingdoms shall all pass away, but there's something about that name. Hey, hallelujah. Our songs have to be full of the name of Jesus. Praise God. When people walk in here, I don't want them to get confused. I don't want to have any doubt who we're singing to. It's not him. It's not you. And as they jokingly say, it's not Jesus is my boyfriend songs. Because you can either sing it to Jesus or your boyfriend. Hallelujah. Because it don't say the name anywhere in there. And uh, praise God. But it's talking about Jesus. And so it makes for deeper churches. It makes for churches that uh, are very deep in theology and relationship with God. Well-rounded churches. And no, please don't think I'm being critical. I'm not. Please forgive me if it came across that way. It is not. That is not my intention at all. And I think we got one of the greatest music programs in the Southeast United States. Sometimes they don't think so because maybe they're a little insecure. But I'm telling you, we have people come in here, guest preachers, I'll say, my Lord, where'd you get this music program? It is fantastic. All I'm saying is, is if you... With a biblical model, maybe throw in a few more hymns and a few more things to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And uh, just make sure every song is edifying Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And uh, Him alone. And that it's teaching. Praise God. Why don't we give glory to Jesus right now. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You remember how many people, when we used to just do it that simple way, had an organ and all that stuff, and didn't really have the greatest talent, and, and really didn't even get together to practice beforehand. Remember a whole bunch of people used to get the Holy Ghost during song service and stuff. Anyhow, we don't need to go there. Because it's sound, I'm not, please forgive me again, I am not in any way, shape, or form trying to be critical at all. I, I'm just trying to be biblical. And uh, if, if something's never said, then it's never said. Nobody knows. Or people know and they just sit there thinking they're weird because nobody else ever says it. Hallelujah. So uh, Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. What we've got to give this community, right now we don't have a lot of money to give this community. We can offer them our prayers. We can offer them the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Why don't we glorify that wonderful name right now? Thank you, King Jesus. I love you, Father. You're an incredible God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 16. And his name, through faith in his name, hath made this man strong. Somebody who had never walked before. Hallelujah. That God made through the name of Jesus Christ, whom you see and know, yea, faith which is by him which has given him this perfect soundness and the presence of you all. When you say the name of Jesus and you've got faith, man, there's power. It may not have happened for 40 years or whatever in the case of this man. But when you say the name of Jesus, amazing things happen. Hallelujah. Say the name of Jesus over your business. Say the name of Jesus at your workplace. Say the name of Jesus at your school. Amazing things happen in the name of Jesus. And it never grows old. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus. Let your house be permeated with the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Something tells me all to glorify that name of Jesus right now. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We know Father, Son, Holy Ghost. In Him, Jesus, dwell with all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. You're complete in Him. Say the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. 
Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now notice this in verse 16. It says, in his name, through faith in his name. The man may not have had any faith at all in the name of Jesus. He may, not, may never even heard the name of Jesus. We don't know. Maybe he did. But maybe he hadn't. But if you got faith in the name of Jesus, great things still happen. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 4, verse 7. Taking a journey to the book of Acts in the name of Jesus. Acts 4, 7. They got upset because they used the name of Jesus just like they still get upset. You know, there is a cognitive bias psychologists have identified. It's called negativity bias. I was going to make a joke with you guys that Abraham Maslow said that there was a bias that for missionaries, that before a missionary can preach to people, they must feel warm, safe, and welcome. And I'm like, we failed on the warm part this morning. I have no idea why it's not warm. And, yeah, but it is warmer in here than it was a few minutes ago. Hallelujah. But uh, that was a joke there. But uh, cog cognitive bias is that people will, will believe negative things far more than they believe positive things. That is just negativity bias. And that's the reason that newspapers exist. Newspapers and news, because if it bleeds, it leads. You never see hardly news stories that uh, 54 people in downtown Albany were helped across the street. You know, somebody, a little old lady or a little old man trying to get across the street. Somebody says, let me help you. Stop the car. That's not news, because it's not negative. Face it, if we say five people get the Holy Ghost, what's your first reaction? I doubt it. I don't think they really did. Because people have a predilection to negativity. It is negativity bias. That is just endemic. It's human nature, and it's fallen. It's not of God, and uh, that type of thing. So when we say the name of Jesus, Awesome things happen. It brings a positivity in the atmosphere. When you say the name of Jesus, hallelujah, amazing things happen. And uh, incredible things happen. This man, if it would have been some of us, we'd have seen him sitting there and saying, well, I prayed for a hundred people before and they never got up. Stay down, buddy. I got to get to the temple. Why? Negativity bias. Friend, I don't want any negativity bias. I want Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter if the last ten people I prayed for didn't get healed. The eleventh one may start a revival that turns southwest Georgia upside down. I'm not the healer anyhow, and you're not the healer anyhow. Jesus is the healer. Praise God. So, in verse 7, and when they had set them in the midst, they asked him, well, what power, by what name have you done this? They knew something was up. Hallelujah. So then you go down to verse number 10. Be it known unto you all. Peter, he's on trial. And uh, this negativity bias going on puts him on trial for a miracle. Be it known. Every miracle you'll ever do, any great thing you ever do for God, you'll be put on trial for it. For saying, well, I didn't believe that could be done. I don't think it really happened. I think that this happened. I think that that happened. And on and on and so forth. I think you used, well, you had things I didn't have. You had special advantages I didn't have. On and on and so forth. And uh, be it known unto you all, and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him does this man stand here before you whole. If you want to be whole, say the name of Jesus Christ. If you want to be really apostolic, you start praying with people in the name of Jesus Christ. Say the name of Jesus every chance you get. Get on your CV and say the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Friend, it will change the atmosphere in places. Praise God. You say they don't believe it. They don't have to believe it. If you believe it. Hallelujah. Let's thank God for that wonderful name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Verse number 12. Neither is there salvation in any other. Mohammedism doesn't get you to heaven. Mormonism doesn't get you to heaven. Jehovah's Witnesses doesn't get you to heaven. Sorry to be so blunt. I love you. It's just us here this morning. 
For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we might. Oh, we must be saved. Hallelujah. Friend, it is inescapable. If you're going to get saved, you've got to come in through the door, which is Jesus Christ. There is no other way. There is no other plan. God in His great mercy did not kill us all like He did the people before the flood, like He did the people in Sodom. And hallelujah. Friend, God has given us a way in His great mercy. Don't try to get away and around the name of Jesus Christ. You've got to come in through the name. Once again, let's thank God for that wonderful name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Now look here in verse 17. It says, but it spread, but that it spread no further among the people, let us straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man in this name. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. Sounds like our school system. Sounds like some parts of the government. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, you judge. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. Hallelujah. If they ever outlaw the name of Jesus, just say the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. At that law. They want to throw your kids in jail for teaching them the name of you. Just keep on saying the name of Jesus. The Bible used to be outlawed in Great Britain. Most people can't believe that, but it did. They used to burn people at the stake for, for teaching their children the Ten Commandments and the Lord's Prayer out of the Bible. Friend, we've got a great privilege here. You just keep on saying the name of Jesus. Everything you do in word or deed, the ultimate standard, hallelujah, do it all in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. If Jesus doesn't approve of it, then don't do it. Hallelujah. Let's stand to our feet and give glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I'm not ashamed. Hallelujah. To suffer for the name of Jesus. For it saved me. It cleansed me. It filled me. It keeps me. Hallelujah. It picks me up when I'm down. It gives me light when I'm in darkness. Hallelujah. And it's going to be on my lips when I make that wonderful holy city. The name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Don't ever forget the name of Jesus. Let's glorify that wonderful name again. Thank you, Jesus, for your wonderful name. Praise God. Hallelujah. Wonderful things are represented in the name of Jesus. Jesus means Jehovah salvation. It shows us his character and nature. And he's got power over devil, disease, death. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus. I'm glad to be a person of the name of Jesus. Before we end, why don't we just glorify him once again. Thank you, Jesus. Your presence is here. Your spirit is here. I'm so grateful to be able to speak the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your great church. Just keep living in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's just take a few minute break. Come back in and have a great time in our main service. Hallelujah.